Hey friends, today we are going to talk on paranasal sinuses. Paranasal sinuses are the air filled cavities in certain bones of a skull. There are four on each side. Look over here. There is frontal sinus. Here we have the ethmoid sinus. The posteriorly there is a sphenoid sinus and this is maxillary sinus. So we have four pairs of sinuses. The first one is maxillary, second one is ethmoid and ethmoid is divided into two parts that is the anterior ethmoidal sinus and the posterior ethmoidal sinus. Then the third one is sphenoid sinus and the frontal sinus. So these are four pairs of paranasal sinuses. So these paranasal sinuses are divided into two groups that is the anterior group and posterior group. So in anterior group, there are maxillary sinus, frontal sinus and ethmoidal sinus. Look over here. These three sinuses are from the anterior group and the remaining posterior ethmoidal sinus and sphenoid sinus are present in posterior group. Before starting with the details of paranasal sinuses, why we are going to study about the paranasal sinuses? What is its important in our body? We are going to study about the paranasal sinuses because air conditioning of the inspired air by providing large surface area over which the air is humidified and warmed. The next one is to provide resonance to voice, to lighten the skull bone and it is useful for providing local immunologic defense against the microbes. So these are the functions of paranasal sinuses. Now we are going to discuss about each and every details which is important for you from the paranasal sinuses. So first we have maxillary sinus. Look over here. Yes, here we have the maxillary sinus and the shape of maxillary sinus is appear like pyramid. Yes, isn't it? Yeah, it is appear like pyramid and the maxillary sinus, it is also known as antrum of hymur. The maxillary sinus develops within the 12th weeks or we can say within the 3 month of gestation period and that's why it is the first sinus which is first to develop. It is the largest paranasal sinus as compared to other paranasal sinuses. Now, second we have ethmoid sinus and look over here, yes, here we have ethmoid sinus and ethmoid sinus is divided in two groups that is the anterior ethmoid sinus and posterior ethmoid sinus. So here we have the human skull and if we remove the nasal spine of frontal bone and zoom out this area, we have the ethmoid bone and the ethmoid sinuses are thin walled air cavities in lateral masses of ethmoid bone. These are divided into two groups that is the anterior group and the posterior ethmoid group. So first we are going to study about anterior ethmoid sinus. Anterior ethmoid sinus is contain different types of cells like agar nasi cells, ethmoid bulla, supraorbital cells, frontoethmoid cells and the halo cells. So in which the agar nasi cells and the halo cells are very important. In which the agar nasi cells present at the agar nasi ridge and above these cells there is frontal cells or we can say below frontal cells there is agar nasi cells and these cells are anterior most of ethmoid sinus. The next important is the haller cells and the haller cells are large cells. If any inflammation occur in these large cells then there is easily blockage of drainage pathway.
so the other type of ethmoid sinus that is the posterior ethmoid sinus open into the superior meatus it contain very important cells that is onodi cells onodi cells are the posterior most of ethmoid sinus and the importance of the onodi cells is that because in these cells there may be chances of presence of optic nerve so this is about the anterior ethmoid sinus and the posterior ethmoid sinus so third one is sphenoid sinus and the sphenoid sinus is present in sphenoid bone look over here here we have the sphenoid bone and the sphenoid sinus occupies the body of sphenoid bone yes it start developing after 2 year of age and it is the last appearance on x ray as compared to the other paranasal sinuses and at the time of birth there may be small cavity present of sphenoid sinus and the last one that is the fourth one is frontal sinus look over here here we have the frontal sinus and the frontal sinus is not present at birth remember that frontal sinus is not present at birth and it start developing after 2 year of age and reach at adult size within 18 year of age so if we arrange this paranasal sinuses in sequence to the order of its development then the maxillary sinus is first to developed then ethmoid sinus then sphenoid and the last one is the frontal sinus we can remember it as mes f maxillary ethmoid sphenoid and frontal in which this all sinuses are present at birth except the frontal sinus remember that and note this point that is the maxillary sinus appear first on x ray within 4 to 5 month after the birth while the sphenoid sinus appear last on the x ray within 6 to 7 years now we are going to study about the radiology of paranasal sinuses and in which we are going to focus on waters view and caldwell's view in waters view it is also called as occipitomental view or nose chin position it is taken in a such a way that nose and chin of a patient touch the field while x ray beam is projected from behind waters view with open mouth is preferred as it also shows sphenoid sinus sinuses best seen in the waters views are maxillary sinus and anterior ethmoidal sinus now look over here this is caldwell's view or it is also called as occipital frontal view or nose forehead position the view is taken with nose and forehead touching the film and x ray beam is projected 15 to 20 degree caudally yes look over here and this is the best view for frontal sinus there are other so many views for the study of the paranasal sinuses but these two are most important for your examination point of view so this is all about the paranasal sinuses let's do a quick revision the paranasal sinuses are air filled cavity present in bony structures there are four pairs of paranasal sinuses in which the first one is maxillary sinus ethmoid sinus sphenoid sinus and the fourth one is frontal sinus ethmoid sinus contain two groups of cells that is anterior cells and the other one is posterior cells most common x ray view for paranasal sinuses is waters view in which sinuses best seen in waters views are maxillary sinus and anterior ethmoid sinus while in caldwell's view or the other name is occipitofrontal view it is 
the best view for frontal sinus. So this is all about paranasal sinuses. If you have any doubt, then you can comment us below in comment section. Thank you.